Peter, uh, as an executive for the world's largest medical IT firm, I can't help but be interested in the medical applications. Can you tell me where you think you're going? At the moment, our company really is focusing um, on these virtual agents. Because we're a small company, we're not extremely well funded. We have to keep focus. We're only a 20-person company. The most important thing is for us, for our company to reach escape velocity so that we can move on to all sorts of different areas. Um, so one of the problems in dealing with large companies is their decision cycles are like one, two, three, four years. And quite frankly, our company can't afford to, uh, to, do, to go there. But as you saw on the roadmap, where, where we want to go is to build intelligent research assistants. Um, I mean, what we can do right now, for example, is um, do questionnaires over the phone surveys. You know, I mean, there, there are many, many applications in the medical field, but unfortunately, most of those are, uh, involve very large companies, government, and so on. So the whole sales cycle, decision cycle, tends to be very long. So we have the technology, but we, we, we don't have the the muscle to get into those applications right now, like unless, you, un you, un unless you, you can help us get in there. Uh, Peter, uh, when I look at the, the future, one of the things that strikes me is, is the gap that potentially will occur from the time that the first real molecular assembler is built or is designed, let's say designed. Mm -hmm to the time when the applications that Robert and Ralph are going to talk about, nanorobots containing thousands of parts, just like a current bacteria contains mm -hmm. thousands of proteins and genes that do dozens of different jobs, right. that that's a huge job. And right now, I think there's probably in the neighborhood of a dozen molecular designers in the world. Mm -hmm. and, and, but the, the, the knowledge in mechanical engineering, mm -hmm. which is fairly directly transferable to mechanical nano-engineering is generally available. So right. the question is, could that be, if you had the funding available, could you direct a team towards getting to the point where it could design gears and wheels and pumps and that kind of thing automatically in however many machines that you need to? Uh, uh, ab absolutely. I, I believe the, the general intelligence engine, really think of it as a subset of human capabilities, very strong on analytical scale, uh, skills, reasoning, obviously much better than humans at memory and, and certain, certain other things. But you know, anything that you would expect a research assistant to, to do, an engineer, a technician, and as we go up the food chain, as we improve the, the intelligence. And of course, it's not directly comparable because its strengths and weaknesses are, are its profile is very, cognitive profile is very different from from a human but yes absolutely any domain that is the beauty of artificial general intelligence question peter let me just uh, c congratulate you on that demonstration you gave i thought that was absolutely fantastic oh, th it's thank hard you. hard to see much room for improvement on that that uh, I think your device handled the call. It, it is a demo. It doesn't well show you all the ways it can go wrong. Okay. It showed you how, <laughs> when it behaves well. <laughs> you know, based on the fact that you have these out on the marketplace on a trial basis, people mm -hmm. are trying them out. Um, how far away are you from breaking even at this point? Um, we expect to break even uh, fourth quarter next year. So we've, our first client has been running for six months. Um, we've got 10 clients now, we've got a data center, so we, you know, we've, we've taken off. Uh, obviously, or maybe not obviously, but you're dealing with English. Yes. Right? And how difficult would it be to deal with something like Korean language? Um, actually, technically reasonably difficult because a, a lot of the core um, the core engine was designed specifically for English because it was easier for us to do that. And it's not going to be that easy to do a different, uh, different language. And we did not put a lot of uh, R&D effort into that because one of the things I didn't mention is the English language call center market is $300 billion per annum. Now, you know, whatever tiny slice of the $300 billion per annum we can get in English speaking, let's just focus on that before we spread ourselves too thin going off trying to do other languages. So was, it, uh, it, it happens to be reasonably I was thinking difficult. more in terms of capital and technology. Yeah. And that, that they, they've got in Korea. It, 
Yeah, no, it could be done, but it's, it's a matter of management resources and you know, company resources. But yes, technically, uh, it, it would require engineering effort. Uh, more questions for Peter? I think there's one behind there. Gathering all the information that scientists are doing, their little, you know, each scientist has their own little group and, and they don't all talk to each other, and now you could take all that information and put it together. Mm -hmm. Will, are you looking at something that could also model cellular processes like Michael, uh, show, Michael Rose showed us how complicated biology is. Would these systems be able to model a, a cell and so you can do virtual experiments? Oh yes, absolutely. And in, in fact, in, in that sense, much better than humans can because it will have direct access um, in, its, in its reasoning ability to directly reason on the data, which we can't do. We have to do that indirectly because technically there's no reason uh, why it couldn't use statistic, the most sophisticated statistical methods directly on the data or the most complex logical analysis on pathways directly on the data because you know, it, it would be wired directly into the data. That's one of the huge benefits of, of artificial brains. You can, especially when they're engineered, if they're reverse engineered, you're still only going to have a human, uh, human capabilities, but we can actually design and engineer the brain um, you know, to, to, opt to be optimized for research purposes. So, thank you. Thank Peter. you.